Hey, happy weekend, everybody. Carolina Weather Authority's meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg, and we've got lots to talk about with the tropics likely to get back to another active period here uh, as the tropical season still has about six weeks in it. And uh, we're seeing this year running at record pace, and that will likely continue. In fact, we're expecting 2020 is going to set a record for the number of named storms, beating the record of 2005. Uh, so make sure you're subscribing to our channel so that you could have more on those. We also have a Facebook group uh, page. Uh, we'll put lots of pretty fall pictures up and talk about um, you know weather here locally in the Carolinas as well as major weather nationwide. And our website, carolinawxauthority.com, has got a lot more about that chilly air that we're seeing this weekend, uh, as well as we've added long-range outlook and a link to our videos, models page has been there as well. All right, so let's talk about what's going on here, and we have the potential for two named storms coming up here next week, uh, maybe even uh, beginning of the week, and uh, we've been talking about this potential system. I haven't tried to name it just yet uh, because we've got one cutting in line here uh, that's not fully tropical yet, but likely will be as it maybe approaches to the east side of Bermuda next week. Uh, so we're going to talk more about that here later in this video, but we've mentioned this system, which hasn't even yet formed, but is likely to form in about four or five days um, in the Western Caribbean, and maybe a threat to a lot of land masses, depending on where it ends up going. The East Coast certainly is one spot that climatologically a storm like this might go. Uh, what we're seeing, though, is a large area of high pressure, which is going to warm us up above average here um, as we get into the uh, days before Halloween. And that high pressure ridge could cause problems in where this storm ends up going. It's going to kind of shut off the Northwest Gulf, where we've seen so many storms this year. Uh, but Florida and uh, the Yucatan, Cuba, Jamaica, um, the Caymans, and um, the Bahamas are certainly at risk. But after that, there's some question marks. So we still think the East Coast is certainly in play, but we could see um, a combination of any of these three tracks. And behind this system, models are starting to talk about um, still some rising air and favorable conditions for at least a couple more storms at the very end of this month and into uh, at least the beginning part of November. So that's why we think we're going to set a record for named storms here this season. Here's the names on the list. Epsilon will be the next one. We think now that that system east of Bermuda has got a better shot at getting there first, while Zeta will be the next system that forms in the Western Caribbean. Where it forms exactly still, we have uncertainty in, but we're starting to at least um, have the solutions on the plate to show you guys. And I personally think that we could get to Eta and Theta um, by November 7th, and maybe even Iota at that point, which would put us in record territory. Uh, we talked about at the halfway point when we were at 17 named storms that we were going to keep the pace of potentially getting to 34. Um, I think that's a little high, but I could see 30 at this point, uh, which would set a record. So let's take a look at the environmental conditions. You can see that um, we certainly still have quite a bit of warm enough water in the Western Caribbean for major storms to form and enough off the southeast coast for at least a hurricane to be in the area. East of Bermuda, we do have potential for a large storm that could reach hurricane intensity still, uh, but really most of our heat is close in and it looks like the Western Gulf now much less likely to see a kind of storm like uh, Delta or Laura, but certainly um, doesn't leave Certainly the door is still open for something to come up there, but the chance of it being a major hurricane is very, very low at this point, which is good news. And you can see our overall water temperature map does show still some unseasonably warm uh, waters across this area. Typically this time of year, the warmest waters are in here, which they are, um, but we still have more places for storms to potentially brew and track where uh, we could have favorable conditions as well. I'll show you this because it may not mean a lot to you now, but this is called the Madden-Julian Oscillation. When we see the brighter colors, we have more sinking air and wind shear, uh, which is a deterrent to storms forming. But when we get the cooler colors, which we'll see shifting across the Pacific into the Caribbean here next week, uh, we have more favorable conditions for storms to form. And then look at week two. At the end of October, we've got a very prime spot for maybe more storms to form perhaps even multiple storms coming out of a gyre in the Western Caribbean. So that's something that we're going to keep you guys posted on. Uh, also, the CHI 200 millibar 40-day forecast kind of shows where the gravity waves go. We want to see the greens here for development. And uh, this is the end of October. Looks pretty busy, potentially, uh, into November. Really, the first half of November through about the 10th could still be active in close, although things start to shut down, potentially, as we head toward Thanksgiving which makes sense seasonably, of course. Uh, but yeah, seeing all this green here, as bright as it is, definitely keeps the door open for more storms to form uh, in the uh, favored spots here right on into about the middle of November. 
Here's a look at the satellite image, and you'll see we have thunderstorms in the southwest Caribbean, but nothing of organization at this point, and a front that moved off the east coast yesterday, uh, which will continue to move away. But here is a non-tropical low that, as it moves more to the southwest, will get into warmer waters and could develop a warm core. It may take a few days for that to occur, uh, but certainly something we could see uh, happening and some favorable wind shear in this area could allow us to have our next storm that would be epsilon and then in here with lowering wind shear next week we will likely have zeta and behind it there could be another one uh, we have a couple other waves here that we're watching but wind shear will keep those from forming into anything organized and a large non-tropical low north of the azores which should not get a name although it is 2020 uh, but you can see this massive area of high pressure over Mexico and the southwest. That is going to protect the western Gulf states, we think, from any kind of landfalls. Uh, where the troughs go is where the storms like to go. And you can see we've got that feed up the southeast coast. And Florida is going to have fronts hanging around, so it's certainly an area we need to be watching. This will get updated here soon. I'll try and refresh it and see if we have a 2 o'clock, and we do. Awesome. Great timing. Uh, but you can see this one area has a 90% chance of forming into a subtropical depression or storm, um, probably by maybe as soon as Monday, but more likely into Tuesday. And that will likely get our next name, Epsilon. And then this area here is one I've been talking about for a while. We're likely to see low pressure forming here next week and some development by the middle part of the week. And that will likely be Zeta. And then after that, I think we'll see more. Uh, but a 30% chance in five days of development. After that, I think our chances do go up, by the way. Uh, here's a look at wind shear, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. Um, the wind shear, which is pretty high right now due to our unfavorable MJO phase, does drop as we see the colors getting cooler and more neutral here. We've got lower than average wind shear over the southwest Atlantic. So we do have support here for a storm to become a hurricane. Not likely in here, but watch what's coming up into the uh, Central American region and South America here. Um, this is next week, and then here's the following week leading into Halloween. Uh, we definitely have lower wind shear as we get into a favorable MJO phase in the uh, Caribbean. So we could certainly have more storms behind these two. And look how low that wind shear is all the way into the first half of November, below average, with high pressure aloft building in, which, by the way, should mean November is going to be warm and dry for a lot of folks. Uh, could be one of the warmest Novembers on record in the United States. Uh, eventually, that wind shear does start to wind down toward Thanksgiving. Uh, but we could still see stuff affecting Central America and the Caribbean region. There's probably nothing too intense at that point. Uh, but again, that's far out, so I wouldn't put a lot of reliability in a forecast five or six weeks out. All right, so let's look real quick at, I think, what will be future uh, Epsilon here. And uh, right now, we don't have uh, much of a closed-off circulation, but we do have low pressure. Uh, it just doesn't have a tropical look to it. We've got a lot of dry air coming and wrapping around it, but... It's going to track southward and then eventually southwestward and could be in a spot where it can acquire some warmer air into the center of the storm and make it more on a tropical uh, type system. And uh, you can see models don't show any threats to the U.S. Here's Bermuda. Maybe that's an area we've got to watch here in about five, six days. Uh, but the average takes things southward and then loop back kind of a counterclockwise or a clockwise loop uh, back maybe to near or to the east of um, our of Bermuda. So something we'll be watching in Bermuda, and here's the model average. Again, not a lot of uh, consistency amongst our ensembles, but definitely you can see the average is kind of in line with those tropical models I just showed you. Um, and then here is the ensemble uh, prediction system showing maybe the best chance of a potential hurricane will be northeast of Bermuda. Uh, finally, we'll look at intensity forecast, and again, we may have a, a tropical system here that could be a depression or storm, I think, maybe by Monday or Tuesday and gradual strengthening, probably at least a shot at maybe getting to a Category 1 hurricane later next week. Uh, we don't have any guidance being run yet on the next system because it hasn't formed, but we could see something spinning up quickly uh, in the uh, Western Caribbean. We'll look at temperature anomalies here, which you can see how warm it looks like it's going to be. We do have a cold shot coming in here next week into the Rockies and Plains, so it'll briefly get cold for a few days before Halloween, but it should bounce right back to warmer than average temperatures almost completely nationwide for November. Uh, so not going to be particularly snowy, we think, in November across the United States, but the battleground areas could see that. What this means is that the uh, waters off the Atlantic are not going to cool too quickly uh, and still support um, you know, potential tropical trouble down in here and, of course, in the Caribbean. Um, as we get later into November, you can see that maybe the heat tries to break up in the southeast, but it's still fairly balmy, um, at least with respect to average. What does that mean as far as precipitation goes? 
Uh, well, it definitely looks dry across the southern United States with the, uh, with the um, uh, exception, I'll get that word out for you guys, being in this area in the southeastern Gulf around Florida and the southeast coast. So that's the area that I think the models are starting to sniff out potential tropical trouble. And look how wet it can be in the Caribbean with that um, sink, uh, rising air from the MJO. Definitely going to still be active with wave after wave potential here. Um, we don't think the northwest Gulf, but most likely southern and eastern Gulf into the Caribbean and around the island nations and southwest Atlantic. So we're definitely not done here in the tropics just yet. Uh, let's look at ensembles. This is the GFS ensembles. We can see this is Monday. Here comes Tuesday and Wednesday, and we're starting to see potential solutions around Jamaica Wednesday and Thursday. This, by the way, is our um, Epsilon system. This is Zeta down in here. Uh, but notice um, there's divergence in track and still a couple models um, leave something left over in the southern Gulf where steering will be weak. So something could try to move west toward the Yucatan or southwest Gulf. But eventually, I think it's going to get kicked out the, uh, up the southeastern coast. We definitely have solutions coming close to the Carolinas and northeast, though. So I would not let down our guard based on what model run one model run showing. Um, we can see maybe still some potential trouble for Florida heading into early November, depending on the, the timing of that system. And oh, by the way, here's another potential system behind it, which I'm going to talk about more in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the European um, Ensemble Prediction System, here is a look at uh, potential Epsilon. Uh, we may see some development by the 19th into a tropical storm. Here's the 21st and one or two spots the um, Europeans are sniffing, out he are sniffing out here in the Western uh, Caribbean. And then you can see potentially a zipper low coming up the East Coast. Um, this system, not a threat to the U.S. It'll stay over the Central Atlantic, but potentially up the East Coast. But also uh, we're going to keep an eye on the Southern Gulf as there could still be something lingering around in here right on through Halloween and then maybe getting pushed eventually back to the east or northeast with new development potential here by the 1st of November, but still lots of time for that to happen. Uh, GFS model has been fairly consistent showing a system coming up near or to the east of Florida through the Bahamas. Um, you can see that on here, this, this system coming up through the Bahamas and definitely weaker than a couple days ago when we had major hurricane solutions, uh, but it will change again. But notice uh, we're tracking through the Florida Straits into the Gulf of Mexico. We get to the middle of the Gulf, and then we don't know where we're going because of this big high blocking things. So eventually that will get pushed back to the east, and definitely something to be concerned with in Florida if this solution is correct. Uh, but the run before it, the 06Z model run, uh, definitely looked different. I'll show that to you all here real fast. I'm going to have to get going because we're taking a lot of time. Uh, but you can see that system going up near Bermuda and not going to be a problem for us with new development possibly. Um, near the East Coast, but that's not going to be anything tropical. So definitely some difference in the GFS. The parallel was starting to show some of this weaker steering environment um, with um, a system possibly moving back over the Gulf. It's now gone back to where the old GFS was, but here's another potential system for the November 1st and 2nd time frame that we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, the Canadian models kind of in between everything's got Epsilon east of Bermuda and then turning northeast. Here's got development over the central Bahamas for next weekend and then coming up toward Bermuda and not necessarily a threat to the East Coast. Uh, European model, which has not developed this system in the Caribbean quite as quickly, doesn't show much more than lowering pressures through next week. Over the weekend shows maybe a system spinning up over the northeastern Gulf, coming across Florida in the southeast and then going up the East Coast. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of options that are out there. It's really tough to make a call just yet as to where things will go. So I'm leaving these three options, but if something comes back here, it could always, of course, make a right turn and come back through Florida and up the East Coast. Epsilon, not a threat to the U.S., maybe a threat to Bermuda. And then uh, we'll watch this area and then this area as we get to the very end of this month and the beginning of next. Quite a mouthful, folks, but um, just want to make it uh, true to you guys that we definitely are not done with the tropics just yet. We hope that nothing, of course, impacts the U.S., but if there's any place to watch, I think it is Florida. Uh, with the second potential spot to watch would be the Outer Banks and up into coastal New England. Um, as we have seen historically, some tracks that have come that way in late October. And you know what? November in Florida could still be active from what I'm looking at at this point. We have to get to closer to Thanksgiving before we can rule things out. All right, folks. Well, appreciate y'all joining me. Have a great, safe weekend. Uh, enjoy the beautiful fall color if you're going to the mountains like I am tomorrow. And, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see more videos from us. All right, everyone, have a great day. God bless.